everybody. Welcome to the latest RxM Cloud Native Short Take. My name is Christian Luxina, and today we're going to short take the RxM Kubernetes Observability Module. In this module, we cover the concept of observability, comparing and contrasting metrics, tracing, and logging. We then take a look at how Kubernetes implements observability by examining the Kubernetes Metrics API and the Kubernetes Custom Metrics API. We also take a look at auto-scaling workloads with the Kubernetes autoscalers. I've got my Kubernetes cluster set up here with a single deployment, and I also have an additional pod that will act as my client called the driver. In addition to those pods, I have a horizontal pod autoscaler that's currently watching my deployment, web one. And this horizontal pod autoscaler will scale up the workload when the workload's resource threshold, in this case, CPU, reaches or breaches a target of 50%. This HPA is set up to maintain at least one pod and it will scale up to five pods based on the target. So let me describe my workload here. I currently have a PHP server that is stored within this code here target.php. And what this code does is each time a request is received on the listening port of this PHP server, it will calculate a million square roots. That's a fairly intensive CPU operation and will definitely scale up as I add additional requests to it. This code is deployed as a Kubernetes deployment. Target deploy.py.yaml. So I've containerized this code and I'm running it as a Kubernetes deployment, as you can see here. Now, in order to enable this workload to scale, I have to provide a resource request. Typically resource requests are used during the scheduling process, but they are also used to help the HPAs calculate a resource target for them to scale against. So now let's go ahead and add some load to our, well, workload. In order to do that, I'm going to create an exec into my driver pod and I'm going to simply run a shell session within this driver pod. And to start my workload, I'm going to run a for loop, which will basically send a request to my deployment service. And once a request is received per the code, that service and its containers is go are going to calculate a million square roots and cause a lot of CPU, well, calculation time. So let's go ahead and do that. Each OK is a response from the PHP server. And each time the PHP server receives that request, it's actually calculating a million square roots. Now, this is going to take a little time to scale up. So we're actually going to speed up the video. And in the meantime, I'd like to discuss what's going on in the background. The Kubernetes metrics server will contact each of the kubelets and collect CPU and memory metrics from those kubelets. Each kubelet has a component called the C advisor, which collects metrics such as CPU usage, memory usage, ephemeral storage usage, among other things. Once the metric server collects those metrics from the kubelets, it then publishes those metrics to the Kubernetes metrics API. Once those metrics are stored inside the Kubernetes metrics API, the HPA will look at those metrics. It will then calculate the current usage of metrics in this case, CPU, against its declared target. And as we can see here, our HPA has found that it's actually breached 482% over its 50% target. And in response to that, it actually spawned additional pods in order to handle my workload and scale up. So now you can see that my deployment is now at five ready pods, five up-to-date pods, and five available pods. The HPA is only set up to scale up to five max pods. And as you can see here, is now currently at five replicas. So at this point, my workloads can continue. However, it will no longer scale up as it has reached its maximum threshold. So now that my workload is properly scaled up, I'm going to go ahead and cancel my workload. I suppose the expectation here would be that my workload should scale down. However, that's not exactly the case. In order to prevent churn or inappropriate scaling up and scaling down in response to spiking workloads, the Kubernetes horizontal pod autoscaler will actually wait by default five minutes before it can allow the workload to scale down. This is a good way of ensuring that if you're under periods of heavy load, that your workload will not scale down inappropriately, and thus you can maintain your capacity in the face of something like a spiky workload. Now, once again, this is going to take a little bit of time. So we're going to speed up the demo here so that you can eventually see that as I've canceled my workload, you'll see that my web one will actually eventually scale down once the HPA allows it. All right, as you can see here, after a short wait, at least short for you, you can see that our web one deployment has scaled down in response to the resource target being, well, 
under the target at this point. And that is how the Kubernetes horizontal pod autoscaler can dynamically scale workloads based on metrics provided by Kubernetes itself. This is just a sample of what you could learn on the Kubernetes Observability Overview module. You can create your own customized Kubernetes courses with this and many other modules using the Courseware Builder on rxm.com. Once you get to rxm.com, if you go under Courses, you can find the Custom Course Builder. And once you've navigated to the Custom Course Builder, you can scroll down and find this module and drag it over to your custom course. That's our cloud-native short take on the Kubernetes Observability Overview module.